Thank you, Steve. Uh, we welcome you all here tonight on this beautiful summer evening. Uh, just hope, hope it lasts till March. But uh, as normal, we'll start off our meeting with the invocation led uh, given by Commissioner Brother Larry Crawford. Thank you, Chairman. Let's bow for prayer. Holy God, it is with grateful hearts that we pause in this time that we've come together to look to you to supply all of our needs. God, we do thank you for the wonderful help that you've given us thus far. For those that have experienced healing because of other illnesses, we give you thanks for that. I personally thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for me. <coughs> go with us now as we go into this session. May all that we do be for the betterment of our community. For it's in your son's name I pray. Amen. Next up on our agenda, we have uh, time for our guest speakers and people who have been invited to appear for the commission by commission members. And tonight uh, we have uh, a regular update that uh, we're, we're always happy, happy to give. Clay Walker. Clay, you're, you're first up tonight. Welcome, Clay. Thanks very much. It's been uh, since I guess second year band of league since I've let, let off. Anyway, it's good. It's good to get out in front of it. Um, I hope everybody's had a chance to see the network's annual report. It's online. We didn't do any printing. We kind of uh, one more people just going online versions, and that's what we did this year. But uh, we're very excited to just wrap up a, a, a challenging year, but a year that saw. A lot of recovery, a lot of things getting back to normal, and us getting back to doing business the way we used to uh, since COVID had shut down so much activity. Uh, we were involved in 832 jobs being announced, a total of $66 million invested. Um, we've only had one year better than that since I've been at CL Networks, that was in 2017. Uh, we had 1,500 jobs uh, announced. And uh, of course, some of the highlights from this year have been the ACT announcements, one in Kingsport, one in Bristol. Uh, Tennessee Hills Distillery Headquarters, Tri-Cities Excursion, and then with our partners in Hawkins County, uh, announcing Simcoe. Um, some of the things that don't get announced in the papers, and I, and I had the uh, conversation with staff about it, we're looking at some companies this becoming a norm, really, who just don't want to do incentives, uh, just public backlash and things from certain, uh, it's just not worth it for them, they're their business model. And uh, we were involved in another 350 jobs that weren't publicized. Uh, I will say 150 of those were done on a, on a project uh, at some point in that. Do an announcement they announced it two years ago, which was an expansion at HSM distribution facility in Piney Flats. They actually exceeded their number of projected jobs by 150. Um, you hear a lot in the press about companies getting incentives and not meeting the threshold. You don't hear 
about those that go above that threshold. And so it's always happy, we're always happy when that happens. Property development has been a big part for the past several years. It always will be. This is the part where I really say thank you to y'all. Um, your, your willingness to invest in property, you have a history of it, it has paid off. Uh, we, and I'll talk about what's coming up later. But uh, we've completed the rail site recently on Partnership Park 2. Um, we already have three really good leads on that site. And um, so that's, that was just fantastic. We identified the land, the other half of that bond issue that we talked about, that we issued a couple years ago. It was not a bond issue, it was an uh, expense to, to come. We'll be doing one on the other end of the county, and we found some good property that was owned by KDB, and we're buying it from them, uh, and we'll finalize that soon. It's right by the airport, right by our offices, and lots of potential, about 35 acre site. Um, it's also excited that we were selected for the Tennessee Site Evaluation Program. Uh, Michael Parker, my office, uh, filled out that application, and uh, that's really going to. Um, I think six communities were chosen, six counties were chosen for that program. And, and it's just an assessment of your sites and potential sites uh, from the Tennessee Department of Economic Community Development, uh, along with some of their partners and consultants. It, it, there's a lot of information to gain there, but most importantly, I think, it expedites you being eligible for site development grants so we can get that property developed beyond just being just raw land. Um, workforce development continues to grow. Our, our military recruitment and career uh, has been going well. With lots of companies reported uh, that they've been able to hire people from our efforts going to Fort Campbell. Uh, career Pathways Portal, which talked about a lot, has been launched, was launched in December. Uh, big shout out to having these. Our uh, workforce development and special projects coordinator for getting the $50,000 grant from the state and then overseeing the development of that website. If you haven't seen it, go to netnconnects.com and it's a great resource for people looking for jobs and ways to change their careers, for workforce development folks to connect with what our industries need, and for our industries to connect with their workforce and the people who developed their workforce. Um, this year, again, COVID opened up things. We got back to doing our red carpet tour. It was well attended. Uh, we're with consultants, and we invited some companies that have recently announced or that were close to hopefully announcing soon uh, to come participate. Uh, we were joined by other uh, economic developers in the uh, Eastern Grand Division of Tennessee. And it, it went great. Um, we also were very proud to host the Tennessee Economic Development Council. That's our state's professional uh, organization, my peers across the state, and we host about 200 people from across Tennessee. Uh, it's great to show off our county and our region. Uh, Metaview was the host community. Uh, some of the things we did, it's uniquely Sullivan County. Uh, had a reception at Kingsport Chamber the opening night where Tennessee Hills Distillery uh, set up the bar and provided refreshments. And we had rides at the carousel. Uh, we tried to limit the reception before he got on the carousel. And then get to that, but there were no, no injuries reported. Uh, we also had hot laps around Bristol Motor Speedway and went to the birthplace the Country Music Museum, and uh, just enjoyed our, our downtowns. And it was in October, just at the height of our fall season, when it was just beautiful here. Um, so what's coming up, I think in, already headed in 2023, question we always get asked is about companies looking. We have a very healthy pipeline right now, and they're looking throughout our county, at all corners. Um, I, I don't think there's a, if there's a common thread to most of the projects. They're looking at the sites that are already prepped, shovel ready to go. And it just emphasizes the importance of continuing to get that inventory up and inventory 
prepared and being shovel ready. Um, we're going to, and I mentioned earlier, we expect to do a lot of work and get some grants to get that uh, site by the airport that, we that we're working on purchasing uh, developed. We're going to expand the Career Pathways portal to be a broader audience than just Sullivan County. I mean, the workforce is out there, our companies need them looking in, and it should be a broader uh, view of things. Uh, and we're going to expand military recruitment. We're working with a private company that works in workforce specifically for military uh, recruitment about getting to the bases in North Carolina and in Virginia. I mean, we're surrounded by great military bases and we, we want to bring in all the talent we can for our employers with workforce being at such a premium. Um, and we look to, we don't have the ideas in place yet, but we're working on some ideas on how we can be more creative and more effective in our existing industry services. That's it in a nutshell, very quick. I know we've got a lot of business. I always want to leave time for, for you know, so many questions my way. But again, thank you for your support throughout all our years, particularly last year where we were so happy to see that such a big <laughs> rebound uh, from uh, a couple of years of COVID. And uh, again, the pipeline looks really good right now. Some very exciting things. Clay, thank you. I'm very really informative. Uh, and I want to congratulate you on your annual report. Been seeing those things for 25 years, pal. That's the best one I've ever seen. And the presentation before the uh, network board director was outstanding. So appreciate the outstanding year you've had. Uh, any members, uh, we got the wife would like to ask a question. The wife is right now. Thank you, Mayor. Clay, on the uh, Bristol Spur project, yes, sir. You, you said it's about completed. Is the spur already in for the no. train to come in? A spur was not a part of that. It was getting the site ready to take a spur. You know, of all three projects that we're working on right now, they all three would have a different spur configuration. So, so if you put it, it's kind of like putting floors in spec buildings. There's schools of thoughts uh, to that, but um, if you put it in wrong, then you can eliminate the site. So there's not a spur there, it's just right up to the point of being able to put the spur there. And, and I want to point out too, uh, Mr. King, if you go, if you drive out to the site and look, you won't see the rail because you see a mound of dirt. Uh, that's on the right of way, owned by Norfolk Southern, and they won't, it's just a matter of shoveling over the dirt for where the spur will come in, and they're not going to touch that just just to keep it separate from the property. Uh, so if you look, say, where's the rail? It's just on the other side of that mound. It's right there, it's just not visible unless you go over and get on top of it. So basically all you've done is lowered the grade of that site. I would say all, I wouldn't characterize it as all we've done. Uh, I mean, it was a $4 million project and knocking down a lot of rock. And not just any site adjacent to rail is a rail site. You have to identify property where the rail has no curvature in it and where you can to get it rail uh, graded is no small fee. And I understand that, but then back in 19 when this was sold to us, it was a spur, and it caught, was called the Bristol Spur. The whole time it was, you know. I, I've heard it called that, and I've tried to correct people. It, those words never came from my mouth. It was to get a site ready to do It that. was in this chamber right here when they was trying to, to tell us that, you know, we needed to go ahead and, and do the $8 million to, to have this ready and, and have a spur that we could bring in for where we could load containers. And that's the way it was sold to us. Well, now I, you're saying that, that I'd like to look at the record where I ever said that. I didn't say you did. Okay. I, I'm not saying sure that you did, but okay. that's the way it was sold to us in here. Yeah. That there, there was going to be spur, and we was going to have a place to load containers in that part. Right. It's it's ready for it. We talked to Norfolk Southern about the different avenues to do it, and there's also state grant money for, a, but you have to have a project to get that infrastructure done. 
So you, are you going to have to have a business ready to come in before you design that spur? It would be smart to. Because if we design it and it's not to their specs, then we just blown an opportunity. And I agree. I agree with that. So, but, but the, the, yeah, and I don't know where the. I guess everybody. I know how words get uh, confused, and I've heard it said. And you're absolutely correct. I've heard it out there, and and it's been said in our board meetings and networks. And I've always said, wait a minute, it's a rail site. Is what it is. Exactly. Yes. And, I mean, we've got it even in in right here, in the resolution part. <coughs> I wasn't aware well, of You know, I, and I'm not, I'm glad we've got it done. And I voted, you know, we you know, we want, need this. And it, it's shovel ready now. And that's what we need. Yes, sir. But, it, you know, just be straight with us when you're when you're telling us what we're going to be doing out here. Well, and I'd it, like to find, I, I object to that, Commissioner. When have I, I have never. I'm not, I'm not talking to you. But I'm you're talking, talking to what, me. What's happening in, in Okay, I just want to make sure you're talking to me. You said, Directed to me, just be straight with us. I thought that was directed to me. Okay, well, I'm, so, I apologize. Okay. I, 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 well, I apologize if I was sensitive that, but I, I mean, we, we we were clear on this in our mind. I mean, we, we looked into whether or not we should do it and go for the money to do it, but it didn't make sense for the reasons I cited. Right. Okay. So, have we got any? close we, we have three projects one's going to be visiting uh, for the second time next week uh, we had one who's visited before we even started the work and it's been back since they were back in uh, September as we were getting toward the end of construction that we stay in touch with and another one that I don't think has been on property yet but it's expressed they want to come for a site visit so we have three leads. Two we're really deep into. The money that we was left over, I said, you know, wasn't spent, and it was for other sites. Once we get this land bought on the parkway, our fourth parkway, <coughs> is it going to go under construction to get site ready? Uh, that, that's our plan. We, we want to, before we start getting site ready, we want to see grants so that you know, we want to maximize our local dollars. But we, the first thing is getting control of the site. All right. All right. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank, thank you, Mr. King. Appreciate it. Um, Commissioner Aper. <coughs> thank you, Mayor. I normally wouldn't do this, but since he kept talking about it, I, I just read this resolution because I thought I might have been a sponsor on it, but I was not. I did vote for it. And that nowhere in those two pages that you just held up does it say spur. It says, it's, the wrong place it says rail grading project. You know, so, uh, and I, the only reason why I'm saying that is I, I think we have to be fair to Clay if he's standing up here has to be uh, willing to answer the questions uh, and everything. Um, payment of grading cost associated with it, grading cost associated. Uh, and I think you are correct. Commissioner King, because we had to grade it so we could say we had access to a spur that is one of the few accesses in, in, in Tennessee. Um, so the only reason why I'm, I'm, I'm correcting you is because I think Clay's up here answering the questions to be legit. And then you you entered that into evidence there, sir. I'll look it up and you Okay, I, uh, just looking back on that time, I don't have any of the resolutions or anything or what, I know what they say, but I do know that we had attachment to the resolution that showed a projected spur, as you recall, for the, uh, uh, so that could be some of the misunderstanding, uh, even when preparing the resolution, but it, it was always a projected spur, and I think we had maybe six or eight spurs projected. Yeah, we had many different diagrams of how spur, multiple spurs, I believe we also showed buildings that could be I think we showed a 200,000 square foot building. On some Glad I drove up there the other day and it's quite amazing the job they've done and, yeah. and the uh, wealthiness of that site. So I hope those three folks take advantage of it because the whole region can use that site. Uh, and uh, 
leaving old truck ride right, doesn't support the railroad as much, but I do now. Yeah. Well, anyway, anyway, and that's what's beautiful, and again, y'all and, and Mr. King, again, to was has always been a, a champion of developing sites, and, and please understand, I, I appreciate it, and I know, and if we are ever unclear on semantics or what goes into it, just let me know, because we want you to understand the projects. It's, it's tough to develop land here. I don't have to tell anybody in this room that. I mean, it's a, it, it's a tough haul, but it's worth it. And I wouldn't trade our mountains. I, I, I was a flat lander of Alberta. I'm a mountain person by choice. So uh, we, we just, it's a good trade off. Any other questions for our network CEO? Clay, thank you for coming. We look forward to you seeing you next quarter. Too. Thank, thank, thank you all very much. Thank you. Next up on uh, uh, our agenda, I'm, I'm going to put it off for just a minute. Uh, Amber, uh, were you going to speak on Commissioner Carr's resolution? Uh, and I understood you wanted to do it during, during this time. So I don't know if Bobby loaded the presentation or not. I'm sorry? I had emailed. Bobby and John a presentation. If not, um, I can just. No, not the zoning. It was. Well, we don't have the rest that's of okay. on the agenda either, Joe. Is that, that that's correct? It's on the agenda. Okay. Let me come. I'm gonna get you to show yourself. Okay. Amber, if you want to speak to. I'll me. just. I'll be brief. Um, don't worry. I've got something to do. Oh, okay. <laughs> So as you know, um, over the past couple months, we've been talking a lot about outdoor recreation, specifically um, what spurred this on was our rezoning request for cabin developments on the river and uh, campgrounds and things of that nature. You also uh, approved the updated zoning code to break down cabin developments from campgrounds. So we have those three separate zoning codes uh, districts, what I have been working on is um, you, you tasked me with jump starting the outdoor recreational land use plan, and I have been working on that. So, uh, what we've been doing is gathering all the existing facilities that we have, whether that be the seasonal commercial campgrounds um, or the cabin developments. Uh, and then we'll, we'll go down and do a complete inventory of all types of outdoor recreational facilities, whether they're state, federal, county, city, or privately owned. Um, so that's what we've been working on. It's a lot of data. And um, some of you have seen the presentation I emailed some of the commissioners as, as we have had individual conversations. Um, I met with a state employee the Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation, we're familiar with it on the regulatory side, stormwater, septic permits, but they have a parks and recreational resource side that we haven't tapped into. Um, so I had a conversation with Jameson. Um, he is an environmentalist out of the Knoxville office, and he drove up to see me on Wednesday, spent about an hour with him, Unfortunately, because we're not a distressed county, that is a good thing, uh, we don't get a free planning service from them like some communities would get, but they will be with me along the way. So when we reach out to our community and have public information gathering meetings, Jameson's going to come up and help facilitate those meetings at no cost. Um, he shared with me some additional uh, similar project plans that other counties and cities have done uh, that he really likes. So I have their plans, which will help guide to make sure we check all the boxes. And the reason why this is important is when you task me and our department to write this plan and focus on the recreation, um, you know me, I'm more of a big picture. I want to make sure what we're doing will meet our needs in the future not just to react to some of the trends of rezoning requests that we've heard recently. Um, and meeting with Jameson 
I learned this week that this plan will serve as sort of a prerequisite for future funding. So if the outcome of this plan, five, 10 year, 15 year goals, from the outcome of, of the work of this plan, let's say we identify some projects we wanna do, trailheads or things of that nature, we can apply to the state or the National Park Service for funding. But if we don't have this master plan in place, we're not eligible. And that's the way things work with the MPO, transportation boards, TDOT themselves has to do a long range plan or it won't get done. You won't be funded. So this is good. I think of this as an opportunity. And um, excitingly, now I have some help. Some of you all met Luke Mead. Luke, will you stand up? Luke Mead um, is our new community planner. So I feel a little bit less overwhelmed. Um, Luke is very bright. He started this week. I want to thank you all for uh, supporting the new position. He's a graduate of Sullivan East, Furman University, and the University of Arkansas. So, sharp young man, he's already just exceeded my expectations this week. He's just delved in. So, we are currently comparing the data from the property assessor with our files on campgrounds, seeing if there's some discrepancies, seeing if things have been added that weren't approved by the planning commission, and there are. So um, if you want to know more, I'll be glad to share the PowerPoint. Um, I would love for you all to be a part of the process, as of course the planning commission will be. Um, our next steps is to collect traffic data counts on all the roads in the county. Um, of course, we. We know we can get TDOT traffic counts, but we're fortunate to have three metropolitan transportation planning organizations in our county. Not all counties have that. Um, basically, all our roads are covered. We have traffic engineers doing annual traffic counts, and if I need a specific road, they'll go out and do a traffic count. Uh, they've already confirmed they will. So that's good information. Um, anyway, that's where we are. I appreciate your enthusiasm and your support. I just want to let you know we are working on it. It's going to take some time. Um, we'll have to do a public survey, public meetings, public notices. Um, but the outcome will be a lot more um, thorough and uh, meaningful. So thank you all. That's all I have. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. Yes. I'm not here to turn on your last okay. on your own. I'm well enough. Um, so the resolution, have you seen item 15? Have you seen the new part for Mr. Clark? Uh, yes, Clark? yes. Um, and thank you for that. Um, I shared my concerns initially last week with the sponsors <coughs> of the re resolution, and I appreciate being able to provide input. Um, you know, anytime you amend the zoning plan, I get a little nervous because we got to follow that process. Um, but I think with Dan Street's input and the last changes, hopefully that's what you have on your desk. Yeah, I think that'll, that'll work. And thank you for, okay. yeah. Okay, I just wanted to make sure because I didn't really, okay, thank you. So you're good with what this one is? Yes, because it okay. will, it's basically putting into words what we've been talking about for the past couple of months. You all have charged us to do with this plan. Um, and as I think more about it, um, and as we've had our discussion, email exchange, um, I think it will relieve the Planning Commission of making recommendations if other things come up this next year. They can say, well, we'll, we'll just advise you know, those landowners as it comes in that you're going to have to put that on hold. And so that's fair. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so. Thank you very much, Amber. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Amber. I normally, when I do a proclamation, face the audience, but I thought I would <coughs> face the commission tonight. Uh, because of the content of the 
proclamation. Uh, we've had a gentleman that stood here before and looked at various commissions over the last 50 years, if you can. Jerry Fleener, would you come forward, please? While Jerry's coming up here, I've got just a couple of comments to make. Uh, this is the first two-page proclamation. You <laughs> act like you've never been here before, Jerry. It's not working. Thank you. Uh, this is the first two-page proclamation I've ever had in uh, my time here at Salt County Commission, and, and that's appropriate. Uh, Jerry Fleener, uh, in my personal life, has been an employee, a colleague, and uh, most of all a friend, and a friend of the Salt County Commission, and a friend to all those who serve Salt County. He's always there. So. With that said, Jerry, I don't want to embarrass you, but I'm going to read this pro proclamation. Whereas Jerry Fleener has been an exemplary community servant of Sullivan County for more than half a century. This month, marking 51 years since he joined the Boca Volunteer Fire Department, one month after turning 18, a mere six months after the state of Tennessee lowered the legal age of service in volunteer fire departments from 21 to 18. Whereas over the years, Jerry has served in office level within the Boca Volunteer Fire Department in multiple positions. And whereas in January 1975, one month after reaching the legal age for volunteer fire department service in the state of Virginia, Jerry joined the Bristol Life Saving Crew and over the years has held many leadership positions. And whereas in 1979, while serving in the Bristol Life Saving Crew, Jerry is instrumentally involved in starting advanced life support and medical program with the Bristol Regional Medical Center, which initiated use of ICU nurses running emergency calls with crew members until said members received their certification. Whereas in 1988, while serving in the Bristol Life Saving Crew, Jerry was involved in establishing the Air Medic Service a coordinated effort with Virginia State Police providing a pilot and a helicopter. Bristol Regional Medical Center provided equipment and supplies and the crew provided volunteer medics at no charge to the patients. And whereas upon moving to Blountville in 1985, Jerry transferred from a Boca Volunteer Fire Department to the Sullivan County Volunteer Fire Department and was hired by the Sullivan County Sheriff's Office where he worked patrol, became shift field training officer, and was a dive team member and SWAT team negotiator. Whereas from 1985 to 2008, Jerry also served as deputy coroner. Whereas in 1995, Jerry was asked by the county mayor to serve as director of Sullivan County Emergency Medical Service and Sullivan County Emergency Management Agency where he worked with staff and with support of the county commission to establish the fireman shift for EMS employees, help bring creation of separate EMS stations. Whereas now retired, Fleener continued to work with the current management and staff to maintain one of the strongest and most professional services in the region, and many would say in the state of Tennessee. And whereas since his official retirement, Jerry continues to serve the community in the following role, activities and positions. Sullivan County 911 Board of Directors since 1995, currently serving as treasurer. Sullivan County Volunteer Fire Department, active lifetime member, currently serving on the Board of Directors as treasurer. Sullivan County Volunteer Firefighters Association, currently serving as president. Bristol Life Saving Crew, lifetime member, currently serving on the Board of Directors. Did you retire? <laughs> Kingsport Life Saving Crew, member and on Swift Water Rescue Team and Dive Team. Const uh, County Constable, District 4, 14 years plus. 
member of the Blountville Methodist Church where he has served in the past on the pastor parish committee and the board of trustees and developed and worked with the church's video programs to bring service to shut-ins and service for special family events. Works on fundraising programs for St. Jude's Children's Hospital. He's a master mason working with projects supporting Shriners Hospital for Children. He's a member of the Blumble Ruotan Club. Now, therefore, while Richard Venable, Mayor of Sullivan County and Chairman of Sullivan County Commission, hereby offer congratulations and thanks to Jerry Flynn and Nella in recognition of more than 50 years of service to the citizens of Sullivan County. Jerry, thank you. tell you like Henry VIII told his six wives. I'm not going to keep you long. Yeah. So, uh, all of this is just something that I've been involved with, and it's not an I thing in any of this. I mean, it's uh, the fire department. It sounds like I can't keep a steady job because I went from the sheriff's department to EMS to EMA, but uh, I was fortunate enough the county gave, paid me for something that I enjoyed doing. Uh, the sheriff's department, I had a great shift. My captain, I've told people, made it enjoyable to come to work at the Sheriff's Department. Uh, EMS, I could not be more proud of that organization and what they're doing today and the support that you've given them for the equipment that they've got, uh, the volunteer fire departments, the rescue squads. Uh, it, it, keeps, it keeps a happy home because if I get under Nelda's feet, she says, don't you need to go wash a truck or something? So I have to leave the house anyway. Uh, but just things over the 50 years, you know, you say, I don't think I've ever seen like this, something like this, and then that doesn't last because then you see something else. But uh, there's been good, there's been bad. Uh, I had the pleasure or the joy or whatever you co call it over my career, I've delivered four babies. But that was not me, that was the crew that was on the truck. Uh, I've lost friends in the back of the truck. Uh, I've lost friends in the services. I lost two at Bristol on calls, probably the best paramedic and best rescue person I know that I knew, and probably in the region we lost over in Carter County with the EMS when we were over there. He, he was just awesome. He was, he was the paramedic epitome, and he also was very involved in rescue. So you see the good, you see the bad. I think one thing I want to mention is uh, hardly anybody, unless you're rock, you, under your rock, you couldn't get TV, you saw the football player with the CPR, and I mean, it affected the country. It, I could see it everywhere. And you gotta realize, these men and women out here with EMS, with rescue, and the fire departments respond to on these calls, they deal with that every day. We saw it once on TV, and I think it affected a lot of people, probably to the good, in a way. But these men and women deal with this all the time. So they will be commended and remember what they do. The Sheriff's Department that I was personally involved with probably got one of the best departments in this area now. They're strong. Uh, the one thing I, I do want to mention is, to give you an idea, when uh, Officer Hinkle got killed, uh, we had the funeral. I went to the funeral. Two people I met down there were two employees from the Chicago Police Department. They're, unfortunately, their full-time job is to go to funerals all the way across the country. And when we went from the school to the cemetery, they, we were talking about all this, and they said this was the biggest crowd of outpouring of the citizens of this community for a one officer killing. They said they had never seen such a response, such support to our law enforcement. And we would be very proud of it. I worked a little bit with Bristol and Kingsport too, and they were, you know, your emergency services are the best you could ask for. So all I can ask is when it comes time, you know, support them, you do. The, the county commission over the years has, very strong. Uh, 
the Kingsport Lifesaving Crew is a regional. We've gone from Knoxville to Roanoke on special and heavy rescue and things like that. Uh, they train all the time. They've got the equipment. They're strong with the Kingsport Fire Department on that. But they have the ability and the equipment and the people uh, to take care of the major events when they have. So I just wanted this chance to tell you, I know a lot of you are new here and everything, but you're not oblivious to what's going on, I'm sure, but realize what we have in this county, uh, the, the, the caliber that we have in all the emergency services. And I just ask you to continue to keep supporting them. So thank you. Again, thank you, Jerry, and I'll, I'll just make the point. Sullivan County could not operate without professionals like Jerry. Probably more importantly, without the volunteerism that Jerry's uh, uh, displayed over the years. So, when you see volunteer fire department, volunteer life saving crews, pat on the back. They're there for all the right reasons. <coughs> Okay, next up is uh, elections, confirmations, and appointments. We have uh, two recommendations from our planning commission for uh, appointments. Sullivan County Regional Historic Zoning Commission has recommended Stephen Hobbs, Jr. for an open slot on the planning commission. And uh, he would serve in a term from January 23 to January 28. Uh, we have a motion to appoint Mr. Hobbs to the Sullivan County Historic Zoning Commission. So moved. Uh, Gardner and Crosswhite and um, Crawford a second. Uh, any discussion, any questions? Mr. Hobbs comes highly recommended for our Historic Zoning Commission. You've heard the motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. Mr. Hobbs is uh, appointed unanimously to a term of 2023-2028. Sullivan County Regional Planning Commission. We also have a nominee. Uh, this may be a, a typo. Amber, are you still here? I am. We're not nominating Mr. Hobbs for both positions, are we? We are. We are? Okay. Yeah. Okay, That's gone out of the ordinary. Thank you. That's unusual. I, I thought we had a typo. No, um, but it's actually not out of the ordinary. We have Linda Burkham who serves on the Board of Zoning Appeals and Planning Commission. And, okay. Yeah. Thank you. We have a, a, a proposal to nominate Mr. Hobbs to the South Canada Regional Planning Commission. Uh, again, comes highly recommended as a volunteer member of the community and, and uh, has the skills to. Uh, more uh, on that job, so we have a motion to appoint uh, Gardner and Cross. Um, any uh, any discussion? Any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it. Uh, Mr. Hobbs is appointed to a second job. Uh, Ms. Torbert, if you would, would you notify Mr. Hobbs of this point? Yes, thank you thank so you. much. Next up uh, is the approval <coughs> commission minutes from previous meetings. That's been looked through you electronically. Uh, uh, moved by adoption by Commissioner Jones, Commissioner Cross, Commissioner uh, Gardner seconds, uh, Commissioner Crosswhite seconds. Uh, any corrections, additions, or discussion on the minutes of the previous meeting? Seeing now, we'll put that on the board, Angie. So we'll have a uh, 
The board will to cast your vote on the motion. <coughs> Everyone voted? Okay, I didn't put those on board, just didn't go slow, so we'll, we'll change the board. Um, take just a second. Our voting system has come, become so versatile over the years that we can do things that I don't even know we can do. Only the folks that run it know, know we can do it. Uh, they can up to the minute. Okay, but when the board opens, uh, oh no, it's not your fault. I, I, I love voice votes. Uh, everyone vote. Anyone wish to change your vote? Mr. Carr, if you voted, I thought probably you probably want to. Madam Clerk, take a vote. 20 yes, 4 absent. Having received the necessary majority, the minutes are approved as published. Next up on the agenda is the approval of notary publics. Uh, so, uh, when the Clerk Jacobs is ready, uh, she will share the list of your applicants for notary publics in Southern County. The Jacobs, you're right now. Melinda B. Aker, Dustin Akers, Whitney O. Allison, April D. Barrett, Emma Cheyenne Brewster, Angela R. Campbell, Pamela K. Chuck, Chuck Kenneth Michael Clevenger, Scarlett Amanda Crowder, Tristan Donovan, Lauren McKinley Dunn, Donna Dye, Tommy Joe Each Jr., Lisa O. Elliott, Catherine M. Farmer, Jennifer Lynn Fox, Abigail Lynn Freeburn, Freeburn, Peyton Garrett, Mary Ann Gillen, Haley McKenna Goodman, Alicia Hale, Jessica Hensley, Thomas C. Hensley, Kimberly Dawn Hawkins, Kirsten Danielle Hawks, Penny M. Jenkins, Sarah Lorraine Kessner, Morgan Kaiser, Stacy Cohan, Amy Black Lukey, Elizabeth Milhorn, Benoit Timothy Miller, Louis A. Montes, Linda C. Morgan, Brandy C. Mullins, Rob Knifer, Katie O'Brien, Amanda C. Owen, Dreama Parsons, Richeline Lane Patrick, Roy Eugene Richmond Jr., Angela Riker, LaCosta Rose, Zena Renee Skelton, Franklin Lee Slaughter, Jr., Jennifer Lewis Sluter, Jill Annette Smart, Melanie Elizabeth Smith, Lisa Ann Snyder, Caitlin Snipes, Janice H. Wagner, Allison N. Williams, Marianne Woods, Barry Worley, and Rachel York. You've heard the list of names. Are there any objections to announce approval of the Um, do we need to read the four on the back that have the bonds, personal surety bonds? Do we need to read those? They were read in a prior meeting. They were? Yes, this is their second reading. They have used personal sureties instead of in lieu of purchasing a bond. So it's just uh, customary that they go for a second reading, but it, they don't have to be read actually. Well, I'll move to approve the, all of them.
20 is for absent. Now, for Chairman uh, Darlene Carlson, uh, we have scheduled a meeting, Darlene, for February 6th at 4 o'clock here in the courtroom, at which time we'll hear comments from the committee and uh, uh, discuss how we go forward with the part uh, involving our committee. So, Commissioner Cross, could you share with me the time? We'll recess for the public comment. Thank you, Andrew. We have uh, one person uh, signed up for public comment in regular session. That's Mr. Rodney, Rodney Pagan. Um, Rodney, you're you're recognized. And even though we have your name and address, I'll ask you to give it again. All that. Um, my name is Randy Padgett, 1125 Gotland Shoals Road, um, Baltimore, Tennessee. Uh, nothing about the agenda. I'm basically up here. It's getting close to budget time of year. Uh, this again, this year. So it's coming up on you. Uh, I know you guys are going to be um, inflated prices on stuff. You're going to be. Um, trying to figure out ways to cut and maneuver and, and this and that. And I guess I'm up here to request a couple of things from you. Um, number one, as you know, I'm often up here talking about school issues because that's the thing that I prioritize. Um, I would like for you to take the time to go back and listen to last or this previous school board meeting, the work session in particular. Um, I think that there's some really valuable information on there that doesn't always get out. Um, there was a good article in the newspaper um, recently about it too, about all the different projects that they were trying to get done with their ESSER money and the struggles that they're running into with getting bidders and um, prices being sometimes almost 100% over the estimates and, and whatnot. So number one is I would remind you that a few years ago we kind of started step one of what was hopefully going to be a multiple step process of getting our schools updated. Um, the middle schools were going to be the phase two at the time. Um, I think Esther is going to hopefully help fund some of that stuff for us. But as it looks to me, and I, you guys may be running into this with the jail and stuff too, things are costing more, it's harder to get bids. We're not going to get as much done with that money as we were hoping. Um, we got other school systems in the area that are looking at putting a good amount of money into their schools as well. I think Bristol's looking at um, putting, I think the estimate was 40 million. I don't think they were going to put that into it, but they were looking at doing some remodeling at Tennessee High. Um, I know Kingsport's looking at 20 million over at DB and another 20 million or so at John Sevier. Um, we have luckily done a little bit of work in our county system, but I guess my thought is, is I don't want to see our county system run back down to where we're having to spend huge amounts and bonds to catch us up again. And I would ask that if if it becomes available, if we can work through it, maybe that we start looking at some sort of stepwise plan to start funneling away a little bit of money to maintain our schools better. If there is some sort of small step increase, um, to me, I'd be willing to pay for it as a citizen to keep our schools in better shape than what they were you know, 15, 20 years ago, uh, or even 10 years ago for that matter. Uh, that's all I'm asking is just that you go back, listen to that meeting, see what some of their concerns are, how they're getting hit with this, see if that extra money not going to go as far, maybe reconsider implementing some of the money that was taken away from capital projects for the school systems a few years ago. Um, I'd love to see us funnel a little bit of money into a reserve, even if it's a reserve that goes to the commission and has to be voted, approved to be used for whatever. I would love to see that. If nothing else, it would act as a good down payment on a bond down the road um, so that we're not, you know, 30 years out, 270 million next time or 240 million, whatever it was. 
So uh, that's the main thing I want to talk about. I appreciate you letting me talk. I know it wasn't related to your agenda, but I know that that time's coming on you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Patrick. Uh, we don't have anyone else signed up, but as is traditional, uh, I would recognize anybody now that may, may be not familiar with our system that came to address the commission and didn't get signed up. Anyone uh, wish to make public comment tonight? Seeing none, we will now. consent calendar, which I thought was a great idea. <laughs> but don't think we can do that. So we have a motion by Mr. Calton, taken by Commissioner Gardner, on item number one on the tonight's resolution calendar, calendar which is the uh, recess for zoning planning. Uh, any discussion? Yeah, I don't board actually. Go ahead. The board hopes to cast, cast a vote on Item number one, resolution for planning and zoning. Everyone vote. Anyone wish to change your vote? How many of you have a no out there? I'm upset for talk. I'm upset for talk. Okay. Uh, sorry, never mind, never mind, never mind. No, sorry. no, it, it, it's not fun. Just unusual, and I didn't mean to call you out. Uh, anybody, anybody wish to change your vote? Madam Clerk, take vote. 20 is for absent. And number one is adopted, and we will recess the public hearing for planning and zoning. Ms. Corbett, you're recognized in what? Thank you so much. Um, I passed out your zoning packet last Thursday at the work session, and Chris will have it up on the screen. <coughs> I know you have a lot on your desk, but. We do have three individual rezoning requests to present tonight. The first slide is just a summary to let you know that case A went to the Kingsport Regional Planning Commission. The second case went to our Sullivan County Planning Commission. And the third case also went to Kingsport Planning Commission. So I will um, present to you, in your packet you have the full staff reports from the city planners, they're very thorough. Um, and if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. So the first request, the landowners are Campbell and Shirley Slim. They are selling the property, <coughs> excuse me, to Matthew Pickle, he's the buyer. His request is to rezone the property off Buttermilk Road from A1 General Agricultural to M1 so that he can relocate a truck driving school to this property. It is two properties. Um, I put the blue star to indicate where they are. Next slide, please. This is a zoomed out version of a broader view of our zoning map. As you can see, everything is still zoned A1. This is in Kingsport's urban growth boundary, and that's why it went to Kingsport's Regional Planning Commission. In your packet, you have their staff report. There was neighborhood opposition, and the petition and pictures submitted from one of the representatives of the neighborhood is also included in your packet. I'm sorry, it's in black and white. That's how it was emailed to me from the city. Next slide, please. Here are pictures of the site that I took. It's my understanding that when Interstate 81 was constructed, this site was used as an overflow of fill material. Uh, that information came from an adjacent landowner who's lived there um, for many, many decades. Next slide, please. Here's more views of the picture I took with my cell phone when I put up the rezoning sign. As you can see, it does front along, or at least has, you know, 
is adjacent to the interstate right-of-way. The fence row, I believe, is the right-of-way boundary. However, this is not at an interchange. It, you have to go through several rural roads to get to the site. Next slide, please. That is the land use plan of Sullivan County. I don't think anything would change if we were to update the plan because as you can see from the zoning map and the existing land use and aerial images, it's still all rural and residential. Next slide. Okay, thank you. You can go back, I'm sorry. That's all I have. The Kingsport City staff recommended against this request and their planning commission also is sending you a unanimous dissent, an un, excuse me, an unfavorable recommendation. So. Any questions on the first case? Any questions? Seeing none. Uh, uh, Mr. Jones, I'm sorry. My, my board is empty. Uh, Travis and, and Sam, uh, Sam, yeah. I have a This comes with a, a, an unfavorable recommendation, both from the uh, planning Kingsport and our county, and I, I trust our professionals and what they do, but also some of the neighbors that are out there that signed this petition in your packet uh, have been out there for years and they don't want a trucking operation, even though know, it's a, a school, in their backyard. So I'm asking for a no vote on this. Thanks, Sam. Commissioner Aker, you're right now. Thank you. I really just going to ask a question because I felt bad nobody was. Oh. Where's the closest M1 zoning to this area? Because it looks like it's a pretty dead straight spot zoning situation. It is. Um, Which is pretty illegal. Oh, yeah. Right. We always recommend against spot zoning um, because it's not supported by the land use plan, um, the trends of development, the infrastructure. You know, there's no public sewer. Um, so, it, yes. Obviously, you could see it from the interstate but to get there, you have to go through either way, whether you come off Shipley Ferry or Buttermilk, um, depending on which side of the exit you come from, you're going through a lot of farms and neighborhoods to get there. So um, there, we could not come up with any reason to support it. I believe the closest M1 or M2 industrial zones would be off Airport Parkway the next exit where you have, you know, the concrete plant or rock quarry and stuff, so. Okay, any further questions for uh, Ms. Torbin? Seeing none, uh, um, we can ask the public, anybody attending here that would like to speak on this uh, case number. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Smith? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, Mr. Smith. If you'll give us your name and address just for electronic record. My name is Jeff Smith. I live on 304 Buttermill. I'm about 500 yards from the property that's being considered to be rezoned. Um, I've got a little list here, but it's going to be a little repetitive, and I apologize. I do have the petition here. If you guys need it, I make copies because I know it's going to come to you guys. Um, also, I have the colored pictures if you guys need it. If you look, there's two or three 90 degree turns that semi trucks can't even get through. So. Um, not just for our benefit, but for the whole community. And there's nobody that I went close to that property that's for this. There's no exit. And again, I'm going to be repetitive. I apologize. Um, I wrote down the road's not suitable for the semi trucks, obviously. Even if you go underneath the new bridge right there, which has no exit, you have to go to Rocky Branch, and then it goes through KOA up the hill, and then they'd have to cut down the hill where the water tower is at the West View exit the airport exit. I've lived down that road all my life and farmed there. So, uh, as again, uh, multiple hazard signs within 1,500 feet of the request. Uh, no exit at the interstate. Devalued property and homes around. 
uh, all property owners locally opposed. Again, I have a petition signed, uh, changed lifestyle of the farm area residents. <coughs> Um, <clears throat> pictures provided, you guys already got that, but, uh, and again, y'all already talked about the King's Court already turning down the rezone request and sent recommendation, but, um, overall, I farm <coughs> the 300 acres, uh, all my life of doing that property down to Patrick Henry Lake, and the actual property that is owned is my grandfather's, I farm that too, and, um, I just don't feel this property is suited for that business rezoning. I just wanted to represent take the people that's around that's not here. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Sir, if you would like those photos to become part of the minutes, the, the official record, you will have to see that I get a copy of it. Yes, ma'am, you can. I'll take care of it. Thank you. Yeah. I'll scan it and get it ready. Do you have a petition? And there's a petition. <coughs> I think there was also the doctor that lives across from the actual property send an email request also opposing it. Uh, Dr. Drumright, Cherry, and uh, Curtis Drumright. So, thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Let, let, me, uh, let me note that uh, the exhibits that Mr. Smith brought will be entered into the clerk's record, but that they were not shared with the commission. Uh, I think that's important you know, as we go back <coughs> and in, in fashion. Okay, the uh, recommendation from the Planning Commission come to you in a positive manner. When the board opens, you know, cast, cast your vote for case number one. <coughs> it should be cast your vote on case number one. <coughs> Everyone voted. Anyone wish to change your vote? Now, clerk, take vote. 20 no, 4 absent. Have failed to receive the necessary majority. Uh, case number one is rejected. Let's go over case number two. Okay. Uh, and just to clarify, everything he handed me is in your packet, but it's in black and white. So um, I think the only difference is this is in color. So it might scan better. But anyway, it looks to be the same that was presented at the Kingsport Planning Commission. Um, okay, if you'll turn with me um, or just follow along. Uh, the next request is from Mr. Patel. He owns property at 3011 Bloomingdale Road, Kingsport. This is in Sullivan County's planning growth area, so we went to our planning commission last month. His request is to rezone the lot from R1 single family residential to B3. The purpose of the request is to rezone it for a convenience store. In your packet, you have my um, maps, of course, also on the screen and the summary. We are recommending in favor of this request. There was no opposition, and the Planning Commission also unanimously uh, sends a favorable recommendation to you. As you can see on the slide, this would be an extension of the existing B3 district. If you're familiar with Bloomingdale Road, um, you have pockets of commercial, uh, pockets of residential, and, and other uses. It is a you know older established neighborhood of our county, uh, very dense. This site always had a store on it. However, it's been vacated too long and he's going to change it from one use to a different use. So it lost its grandfathering status, unfortunately. Um, so the site, the building is still there. He's been renovating it. Um, and so we hope that if it gets rezoned, it'll be an improvement to the neighborhood. They won't have a, you know, a, a vacant storefront. For the explanation, have any questions for Ms. Gordon? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. It comes to you in a positive manner. When the board opens, cast a vote on case number two. Has everyone voted? Anyone wish to 
motion to change the vote. Madam Clerk, take the vote. 18 yes, 2 no, 4 absent. Case, case number two, having received a necessary majority, is approved. Ms. Dorbin, case number three. Okay. The last request is um, also went to the Kings Park Planning Commission. Thank you. This request is from Russell Cable. He owns property, uh, you access it off of Fall Creek Road. Thank you. His request is to rezone his property from R1 single family residential to A5. It is, as you can see from a zoning standpoint, it's a landlocked piece of property. However, it is served with um, a grandfathered in private shared road. The request to rezone to A5 is because it can't be developed as a subdivision because it has no public road to lead up to it. So what you see is what you get, basically. He built a beautiful home, and he would like to utilize the A5 zoning so he can build a garage. He does have some equipment to you know, maintain the private road um, and you know, tractor um, and truck. And so that's it. He would like to utilize the A5 zoning so he can build a storage building. We did get some phone calls, but a5, people don't know what that means. And the consensus from the neighborhood was as long as it's not a business, they were fine. And A5 is actually kind of our most restrictive agricultural zoning district because it's, you cannot subdivide tracks, uh, like the minimum track size is five acres. There's some pictures I took when I got up there that's his home of the property and the road leading up to it. Do I have anything else in your PowerPoint, ma'am? That might be the end of it. That's it? Okay. This went to Kingsport Planning Commission. Staff recommends in favor. There was no opposition, and their planning commission also recommends in favor. You heard the explanation of Ms. Dorman. Do you have anybody have any questions? Seeing none, thank you in a positive manner. We board up to cast your vote on case number three. the Historic Zoning Commission, the Reese Museum at ETSU has an exhibit of the Old Deary Inn, our very own. So um, they are all, some of the, the pieces are borrowed from the Deary Inn, some ETSU already had, and, and then all their research. So I'm um, very proud to say that we, we made the Reese Museum. It's a temporary exhibit and it's free. So if you want to share that poster with your business or friends and family, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next up, we have a consent agenda. Mr. Iverson, you're recognized. Yes, sir. Mayor, I'd like to remove number seven from the consent agenda. Without objection, item number seven is bumped from the consent agenda, uh, and we will pass consent agenda. We will consider the consent agenda without number seven and hear it in its regular place on tonight's topic. Uh, Mr. Cross, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, considering most of the consent agenda are grants being accepted, I would move that the entire consent agenda, um, all those in favor, be co-sponsors to those resolutions. Without objection. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cross. So without objection, all those voting in the affirmative will be uh, listed as co-sponsors on the consent agenda, and I uh, would remind you that any negative vote would put all the consent agenda items back on the regular calendar. So, when the board opens, 
Uh, the uh, motion to adopt the consent agenda. So moved. What was that? Commissioner Crawford, Commissioner Cross. Um, any, any discussion? Seeing none, when the board opens, to cast your vote on the consent agenda minus item number seven. Everyone voted. Uh, consent agenda must be passed with a unanimous vote. For take your, take, for, out, take for, out number four off the consent. Uh, number four off the consent agenda. <coughs> let, let me look. Without objection, number four. Item number four will be heard on the regular agenda. Uh, any any further? Uh, Madam Clerk, take the vote. Nineteen yes, five absent. I received that necessary majority to consent agenda as amended is adopted. Now uh, I need to recognize the Commissioner Carr. Uh, you, you have some guests here to speak on a resolution. Number 14. Move off to the front. Come out of order. So that's, uh, I believe you're sponsored item number 15, Joe. Yeah, uh, Amber already spoke about it. I'm sorry? It's 14, Mary. 14. 14? Okay. I've got the right number. I've, I've got a different set of papers than you all have tonight, so I'm going to struggle a little bit. So, without objection, Mr. Carr requested item 14 be rolled to the head of the agenda. Now, if you will bear with me. Pardon me, Mr. Chair. My resolution is number 15. Uh, Hunter's is number 14. Are they together? No, not at all. Not at all. We're done with the bar. He's old enough. 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 He's old no, not, no, no, no. You're okay. Okay, we're we're going to roll fourteen to the head of the calendar. And Hunter, you're recognized, right but just got it. I see him coming to the front. Let me get Mr. Conkin and Carl to come up. Right, they've been here. and They were listed on the agenda and in a different place, and that's why I've asked you to roll it to the front because they have not been on being here. So we want to come back. And Hunter, you're. You're recognized on your resolution, if you want. Uh, well, you want uh, Joel, you're recognized. Great. We'll play past the microphone. Well, I'm, as always, I'm glad to be here on behalf of the Kingport Housing Authority. This is an amendment in front of you to an existing uh, TIF project that was previously approved, uh, I think, late in 2021 by this commission <coughs> for the uh, what I want to call the old Walmart site on Stone Drive that's been redeveloped and, and you know the development if you've been by there's you know getting near completion it's, it's coming along very nicely uh, it's a residential development of about 90 single-family homes and townhomes and the reason that we're here is uh, the developer ran into an unexpected issue on that project relating to the, an unknown stormwater line, and, and Mr. Karst is here to talk about, you know, he can answer those details uh, better than I, but he came back to the Housing Authority to request some additional funding 
uh, but due to that unknown and unexpected expense and relocation of that stormwater line. And that was about uh, $350,000 of unknown, unexpected cost. So what he's asking is that the TIP be amended. The previous TIP assistance amount was $1.2 million. And he's asking that that be increased to $1.575 million to cover his increased cost and some of the cost of, the, of amending uh, the debt. Uh, so in order to do that, what, what this amendment would in, in essence do is the, the prior TIP had a 35% holdback, and those that have been on the commission for a while understand that when we talk about the TIP increment, we're talking about the new tax money generated by the project. The original tax money from the site before the new development occurs automatically goes to the county. So we're talking about the new money, and 35% of the new money was held back for the county in the original plan, but in order to increase this amount, we would be reducing that, eliminating that holdback. It would still be a 15-year TIP, but by eliminating the holdback, that would allow uh, us to amortize the additional debt over that 15 years. So that's, in essence, all the amendment does. It doesn't change the project. It just eliminates that holdback. And I'll let Mr. Karsh address the details of that. Uh, if you have any questions. Anybody got any questions? Anyone have any questions? Joel Wall is here and then we'll recognize Dan. Okay, uh, Mr. Carr, uh, you're recognized. Welcome. Good to be here. Good to see you guys. Uh, you know, uh, Carl says she's sorry for not joining me, but she's at another municipality and so couldn't be here. We, every time we've been here, she's always joined me. That sure seems to help me. Maybe you all too, but I just wanted to say that, uh, you know, when this first thing started, some of us kind of need to remember just a real brief thing. You know, I went to Larry and Sam and Hunter and John and, and Archie here and, 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 and Mark Vance, uh, and I want to tell you that it was kind of hard to get this because this was a little different, but I didn't know maybe if uh, I'd sent, I've been in Southwest Virginia today and I've not been in community. A couple of places not communication. It was just we'd sent something I think up here to Jay uh, Jay Charlesman. Did he get that? Is he here? John. John. <clears throat> or did we send it somebody? They said they didn't would have it ready for a PowerPoint. I just gonna show you a couple of pictures. That's all we're gonna do. Is yeah, that, we probably did. You have. Okay. We didn't get in time to get up here. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Well, they were kind of nice. Uh, it showed Bristol. What's happening in Bristol on that TIF and. Uh, unbelievably, this week, two years ago, we mobilized on that property. And it now, we're very thankful because it wasn't supposed to work out this fast. They had a real demand, and we were not supposed to be starting the final phase until October, which would have meant that would have pushed it, you know, finishing out maybe in October. But thankfully, because, you know, when you're on a tip like this, it always worries you. But, and then, unfortunately, that we did hit this. Unknown. I really, the city had no, couldn't be responsible. So if somebody had to take it. Now we're still responsible for fixing that out in the public right of way. It's, it's our responsibility. We got to stay. The tip has to pay for it. Ultimately, though, we're responsible until it's paid for. It. But thankfully, there was a mechanism in place, so it wasn't a big fuss to do this. And you know, and I about did I say Archie? Too? I did. Yeah, Archie. Then there was the original group that kind of coalesced to get the rest of y'all to come along. And, that body to help us, and we're very thankful. But we're also thankful that there was a little bit left. And to be fair, that was estimated, but that was the maximum we could do. Actually, it cost just a little bit more than what we're receiving, but I'm not going to complain because we wouldn't have been there had you all, that would not have lights on right now, or at least for us. They wouldn't be lights on, and there's all, 77 of those homes are starting right now, well underway, and they've already started the foundation pads down at the old car wash, or some of y'all remember that, for 14 townhomes. Mm -hmm. So it gives me a sigh of relief to sit here before y'all tonight and say that it's that far along, you know, because you always get concerned when you, you know, with public <coughs> like that. We never had, had the opportunity to take advantage of that. So if there's any questions, uh, our, you know, all phase, our equipment division, and, and, and our uh, 
and ask our development team is very thankful for anything of these things that you all done to help us get lights back on in a pretty dark place. Looks like we have a couple of members questions. Uh, Commissioner Crawford, you're recognized. Danny, how many of those homes have actually been sold to date? I think, Larry, there's in excess of 60. Right. 60. And, and, uh, and to be, when we came to you all, uh, I think that we had estimated the single family detached to be at $230,000. Right. And they have, they're selling, or the average selling price on anything thus far is $304,000. And uh, that will help us. That's bad that there was a lot of inflation, but that will help us get that debt paid back when, you, when they reappraise it. It'll help us pay that, that debt back. Hopefully, we'll get it paid back in 10 or 11 years instead of 15. You know. uh, bad for the consumer, but thankfully, at least if it had to happen, it, it will increase our chances of getting y'all paid back and y'all start to enjoy those benefits. When you're enjoying so hopefully, some of the benefits of just having newfound residents join us. You know. Because most of them, uh, we're thinking we're about 50% or 60. We're not even in state people. And I think we have five from Nashville that lives there too. So they're, they're, they're moving too. And some of them actually moved to our, our region up here. Commissioner Van over here, recognized. Good evening, Mr. Karst. Good evening. Good to Good see you, sir. Good to see you. If for some reason you couldn't relocate this line, how would it affect your development? Well, I don't know. I, the, Thing is, I've never run into this before where the city didn't tell you, or and they it was so old that they wouldn't have known. You know, what I mean, I get it. I don't know what we would have done. I really just called the city, or the city and us, we kind of found it and we told each other. I don't know, it, that's that's a lot of money to unexpected money by relocating this line. What that allow you to build more homes? Well, we were able to take the three, there was three, it didn't, it was actually it didn't affect more, it just went over and, and dog -leg, leg straight, we'd already built the road, everything was in, and it dog legged and ran straight down uh, towards the, uh, the, um, the strip mall, the little strip mall that's there, and just ran down through there, and I don't even know actually where it actually ended up at, but we relocated it today uh, and got it down to the T dot right away, and it, it's in safe harbor for everybody now. But we didn't know it. It, it. it could have literally, if we just hadn't accidentally found it, it could still be there. And nobody would have ever known the difference. But the problem with that is, if anything ever opens up, it would it could be not just bad for the three lots. It could have probably been bad for maybe ten or eleven lots. And we're just fortunate that by accident we found it. I guess it's not an accident. You know. So it's integral. This is an integral part of your development oh, yeah. and something that had to be done to yeah. proceed. Yes, sir. It did. Thank you. It, and it wasn't, we would have preferred not to even been back here talking about it. It, it. it was, but as it stood, that's what happened. And we're just thankful that there's a little room left to help us deal with it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Van uh, Any other questions for Mr. Carr? Thank you, Danny. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Mr. Lott. Renews his motion for immediate introduction to lay the roof of immediate introduction and adoption of item 14. Second by Commissioner Gardner. Any questions for the sponsor? Requires 16 votes for passage. Seeing no one on the board, the board open, cast your vote on item number 14. Everyone voted. Anyone wish to change your vote? Now, clerk, take the vote. 20 yes, 4 absent. I received the necessary majority. Item 14 is adopted. And now back to our regular resolution agenda. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, Thank you, Danny. Thank you, Joel. This commission has no old business before it. Uh, you keep up your work and I congratulate you for it. So, first up on the new business, uh, two was on consent, three was on consent. 
four, five. We got, we got a big four. Four. Yeah. I'm sorry, we got, I was just looking to see which one Hunter wanted to bump. Now number four, program. and that is sponsored by Commissioner Gardner and Commissioner Couch. Mr. Couch, you're, you're recognized on item number four. Mr. Gardner, you're recognized. Thank you, Mayor. This property was approved to be sold by the Delinquent Tax Committee. The resolution is to sell a county-owned delinquent property tax in the 11th Civil District for the amount of $5,000. The amount of uh, money owed on the property is $11,300. Like I say, the Delinquent Tax Committee approved the uh, sale for $5,000. There's no uh, further questions. I renew my motion for passage of item number four. Any questions for the sponsor on item number four? And board office. Cast your vote on item number four. Mr. Gordon moves to waive the rule for measured introduction and adoption of item number four. Does everyone vote? Anyone wish to change it? Madam Clerk, take the vote. 19 yes, one abstain, four absent. Have received the necessary majority. Item number four is adopted. <coughs> we really didn't do that right, but we were where we are. <laughs> that, that should have been heard in regular order after, after item number two. So uh, back to the regular agenda. I've got more paper up here now for some reason. Huh? Back to the regular agenda, item number two, Commissioner Gardner, you're right now. Item number two is on consent, sir. It's on consent. Okay. You don't say that. I've got, I, no, our number seven is up next. Okay. All right, Commissioner Iverson, you're right now on item number seven. Uh, yes, sir. I know it's uh, Mr. Stidham's resolution, but I actually have to go back. back. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me recognize Mr. Stidham, who moved his adoption of item number seven. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This resolution is to authorize temporary funding not to exceed $30,000 to offset completion costs of the Veterans Memorial at the Southern Callan Military Park. Uh, Mr. Johnson came and gave us some details on this uh, during the work session. Is also here tonight if anyone has any more questions about that. And uh, we'll be requesting waiver of rules. Okay, you've heard the explanation, second by Commissioner Crosswhite. The board's open, and uh, Commissioner Iverson is time to recognize you. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just have a motion to amend. I actually handed out a sheet to everyone. It's a uh, printout of this. I should have put item seven at the top. I apologize for that. What this motion does is instead of making it a $30,000 loan, it makes it a $30,000 one-time authorization just to give them not anything to pay back. Everything that I've highlighted on the sheet of paper that I handed out is just eliminating those words. It makes it much cleaner. It takes a lot of things out, but uh, my motion is that. Have you filed that with clerk, uh, Mark? That's correct. Yes, okay. You've heard the am amendment number one to item number seven, uh, seconded by... Well, let me ask the sponsor first. You accept that uh, amendment? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, we'll accept that amendment. Thank you. Uh, the, uh, amendment number one is accepted, so we're back on on item number seven. Uh, any discussion? Mr. Sidden renews his motion for immediate introduction and adoption by item number seven. Right, I push button. We put the wow. I don't have any. They unplug you? Yeah. <laughs> We've been trying to get those down for you. There we go. 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 
Don't touch it. Don't I, didn't touch it. Touch it. I didn't have a light over here. I, I, I wasn't kidding. I didn't have a light. <laughs> oh, you're good. You're good. But, but anyway, where's the money going to come from for this? Is that what sponsored paper? Whoever. General General. The amendment, I guess, or the sponsor is the general fund. His amendment would bring it from the general fund. Uh, I got a question. Our, uh, we've got in the house over here, we've got a veteran's uh, What's the remain service? What's the remaining balance of that been if we haven't got anybody in that office for it's been for what six months? Well, that that is a completely different line item. The veteran service office uh, interviews have been done, and we will be presenting a name to the mayor uh, tomorrow on the new veteran service office with his uh, recommendation, and he'll approve it from there and go on. Through the hiring process, but are you going to use that money that that, that has it's supposed to be? That's all now, I'm asking. Now that money is completely separate. That's a veteran service office. It has to be spent on that as designated funding for that office. This is completely separate funding. I guess where I'm at, this is a, involves veterans too. It, it's a veterans uh, park. Exactly. It's right out there uh, over exactly. here. It's for veterans, and it's a memorial park. I guess where I'm coming from, since we've been in this this group, we spent money like crazy, and it's coming from the you know it's always coming you know from our uh, fund balance or fund. So, when are we going to stop doing this, or are we just going to raise taxes and, and go on with it? That's where I'm going with this. You stop, but I'm not against you all or the you know it's just where are we going to stop on? This? And I, you know, it, it seems like every every time we come in here on a Thursday, we spend a pile of money. And I don't see where it's going. You know, I don't see where it's going to come back. Are we going to cut costs somewhere? Or are we going to just raise taxes? And if there's some way that we can take some money and move it from one place to another to cover that, so we pass a new budget, what's wrong with that? You got money with this one set there. You're not going to use it. Well, that, that money, we can't exactly move it. We already dealt with Larry Bailey about the situation with being able to move it, and that was one of the reasons why we did it. Uh, as far as the funding uh, for that, that money has not been spent out of the Veterans Service Office. That money, it goes back into the general fund that's not spent. Exactly. I couldn't tell you exactly what that amount was uh, after Mr. Fink left on the salary, what's remaining there. But uh, that money will be going back into the general fund, whether you say we move it or it, uh, that money until we hire someone to come in is going to go back into the general fund. So I couldn't tell you exactly. Yeah, that's one of the Instead of getting new money to cover this, why can't we use that money? Well, that would be a Larry Bailey question uh, on that. Larry, is that, is that relevant? Can we do that? fund the operation is set up for the brand of the year, then they could do so. That's all I'm asking. And then next July 1, when you get your new budget, your money will be back there. All I'm doing is, you know, no new money. It's all I'm asking. Well, that, that money's still going to be there, uh, Dwight. It's, it's not going anywhere. It's not been spent. It's got to go back in the general fund. As far as push-pulling it, I couldn't tell you if we have enough to cover $30,000. Uh, probably should be pretty close to that. So it's basically even approving the new money, that money is going to go right back into the pot. We will have a new veteran service officer coming in in February. That is the plan to get them to training and everything, and that's already covered in the budget. But I couldn't tell you if it's exactly $30,000, but that's it's the money is there. 
regardless if you say it's new money or not, that money is going back into the pot. I understand what you're saying, but to move it from one line onto that, that's, uh, that's Larry's department on that. So, But we have to have funding from February uh, to the end of June for the new veteran service. I don't, I don't want to mess with that. I yeah. just, what I'm asking is the money that hasn't been spent. The money that hasn't been spent will be going back into the general fund. It doesn't roll over in that account. Exactly, and that's what I'm saying. Instead of us taking new money out of the general fund, why can't we use that money to do it? And, and actually, in, in since why it is doing that, that money will go back in in June, at the end of June, July 1st, that money's back into the general fund. But we can't, you know, saying a push, it's basically a push-pull either way, but to go in there and take $30,000 out, put it in the general fund now, that was something Larry would have to do and go through the budget committee, I'm sure, to move that. It's basically a push-pull on what we're doing, but that money will go back into the general fund. In essence, Dwight, it is doing exactly what you're asking through the natural course of the budget by the end of June. But we are taking new money for his amendment. We are currently would be taking new money for his amendment that would anything that's left out of the Veterans Service Office will go back in the general fund. Whether that's 30,000, 29,500, 40,000, I couldn't tell you to a point right now because of the budget where we're but, at. But, but Commissioner King, as you were talking about earlier, this is not this is a one-time expense. Exactly. So we're not going to have to raise taxes for a one-time expense. Exactly. It's expending money that we already have held back in our general fund. So if, if, it, if I were trying to say a $30,000 every year, then I imagine that we'd have to look at that as far as beyond that. But this money is a one-time. That money has to be replaced. So money's got to come from somewhere to replace. If you want to keep the fund balance exactly the same size, exactly. absolutely. But I mean... Exactly. We spend money every month, like you said, and I mean, to say that this group spent too much, kind of think that's hard to say when you spent $2.8 million a year the month before we came. So, I mean, every month we do spend a lot of money, I agree, exactly. but, but we're going. spending one-time money, not something that we have to make a bigger budget because of or, or raise taxes because of. So. But just y'all think about this, and then we go forward. When we're bringing all this stuff in here to spend money on, let's think about it before we get here because at some point in time, this whole group is going to have to decide what we're going to do with our budget. And if we don't start sometime and start limiting what we're spending, then come June, July, we're going to, we're going to have to have a vote. And the taxpayers out here are watching us very close on what we're going to do with our taxes. Because, they're, you know, they're just like everybody else. Everything that they buy has got them double whatever. And, you know, it's tough for these people out there that, that uh, to pay tax. You know, they've got property taxes to pay this month, coming month. So, here you go. I just, you know, at some point in time, I just want us to look at what we're spending and before we get to the end of the year. Thank you. Mr. Riker, Drew. Uh, yeah, Commissioner, you do recognize. Thank you, Chairman. Um, since I wasn't here last Thursday, I apologize because this thing was originally on consent, and then you pulled it, right? Yes. So essentially, it's just on first reading tonight. No, it's a new business. Mr. Record, I've asked for waiver rules on it because I'm kind of like uh, Dwight. Uh, um, it's not about the money, but when we spend money, what he's asking is, my philosophy is always, I want to know what account it's coming out of to what it's going to. And everything, and so that that's that's why I was saying that unless there was some emergency for this, would give you time to get all that. Well, there is actually with the building process, we have we're going to have to have money to complete the project uh, on that because with the concrete, the increase in prices since this was developed, and we actually got the program going, uh, the, the planning going, and every other construction going, we're at a point that we're going to be at a standstill and kind of at a catch-22 of being able to move forward, having the money to be able to pay. Uh, unlike the jail, where we're able to roll out something and pay it 120 days, once this concrete's put down, we've got to pay that contractor you know, within 30 days. We've got to get that paid on that because of uh, the fact that it's a small contractor coming okay. in. And I'm kind of like, uh, Dwight, I think, same way, the, the reason why I, I can't support it is because 
knowing we we actually have it it is going to be kind of a wash with the vs i mean just even though we can't account the account codes and the exact number at this Correct. point what he's trying to say is and i agree with it we have that money it's kind of sitting there it's going to go back in the general fund and we're going to move this back over as a one-time uh, payment essentially it sounds like yes all right thank you mr record uh, uh, uh and Sponsor, I, could I take on the personal approval this year on your resolution? I'd like to speak to it. Uh, every, everybody that spoke is right and they've made a good point. And I, I would remind members in, in working with sponsors of this resolution, this is a timing issue. And uh, we don't know what's going to be left in that personal services account at our Veterans Affairs office. Uh, because you're going to bring me a recommendation tomorrow uh, to hire somebody, so that payroll is going to start back up. I don't think since Mr. Fink has been gone, and tomorrow is going to accumulate thirty thousand dollars. So there will be, there will and be it's managed. Why don't you make a good point? And I'm going to make a suggestion in the, in the meeting to, toward what, what your point was, but it is a timing issue that we have payment due for concrete that may be donated in the future has been committed to be donated, but you need it now. Correct. <coughs> okay, any, any further discussion on that? Mr. Stidham renews his motion for the media's introduction and adoption of... <coughs> Wait, we're voting. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> like I said, I've got so much paper. Never um, went voting in the firm to be added on as a co-sponsor? Uh, without objection. Any further discussion? Seeing none, when the board open, cast your vote. Has everyone voted? Anyone wish to change your vote? Madam Clerk, take the vote. 19 yes, one abstain, four absent. I received the necessary majority. Item number seven, is adopted. Um, next up, item 13, Commissioner Watt, you're recognized on item 13. This resolution, this resolution is for Sullivan County EMS Services, station number 8, order to provide power to a generator. Sullivan County Commission is authorized funding of $15,445 to pay for electrical upgrades to Sullivan County EMS station 8 accounts to be assigned by the Finance Department. The generator was brought to the location where Station 8 is now from Station 4 beside the Health Department. They got a new generator at the Health Department on Sullivan Street and took this generator to Station 8. So we need it hooked up when it was there, dropped off. It had a 400 amp and it needs to be converted over to, I think it is a 300 transfer switch. Um, Acorn's quotes on the backside, and I waiver the rules, and anybody's got any questions any further, Mr. Mays is here, I think, in the back still, and he could answer more questions. And the price will go up if we don't do this now, um, so power goes out. We don't have any radios in the station. Um, manual doors, those doors are very heavy. And uh, it's probably the only station in Kingsport without a generator. All KFD stations have generators. Um, the EMS stations do not. Um, so as we move forward, probably on the new station, we will probably put a generator in that station. So, thank you. Hunter, do you want to waive the rule on this? Yes, sir. Uh, Commissioner Lott moves to waive the rule uh, for the immediate introduction adoption of item 13, second by Commissioner yeah. Gardner. Have everybody uh, on and the And all those voting in the firm would be, would be shown as co-sponsors. Any questions? Or sure you recognize. Hunter, you said the new stations would have to have generator. What about the one in Blessed if this built? Is there a generator there? None of them. 
None. What are we going to do if the same thing happens there? <clears throat> so that station there is built different than station eight. And eight has side rolling doors. Station three has rolling up doors. So it's very much lighter door. Um, station eight is the only station with those heavy doors. You can manually get them open, but this last power outage downtown, they had a little bit of difficulty. But that's been fixed since then. But moving forward, we don't need to think about just garage doors. We need to think about our radio system, power in general, and that station can actually be used for other things when power does go out. Uh, That's what I'm getting at. The one in, one in Blessed City we just built will be the same thing with them. They have to have radios. They have to have absolutely power too. So the reason the generator's at eight is because it's a much bigger facility, much bigger station. When all of these were designed, why was this not brought forward and we had to have generators for them? We didn't have plans to put generators in. The reason the generator's there is because we got a grant at the health department that generator was moved. And that generator would cost right now probably $60,000. So we got the generator free. I think $15,000 here is pretty good. And that's why we hadn't looked at any other generators anywhere else because the, the price they, they are. For other questions, I don't, let, me, let me clarify. Those are bifold doors at Station 8 and roll up doors. And Okay. Yeah. Just my. I will. The, re the reason I said we need to probably look into moving forward with Station 6 with the generator is because Med 6 is inside Fire Station 6. Station 6 has a generator. It's also got a backup for dispatch when Central Dispatch goes out of service. So that station's got a generator. We don't have to worry about that. But moving forward on Station 6, I'd like to have a generator there too. You've heard the explanation. No further questions. We're ready to vote. The board opens. Cast your vote on item number 13. Requires 16 votes for passage. Is everyone voting? Anyone wish to change your vote? Madam Clerk, take the vote. 20 yes, 4 absent. Have received the necessary majority. Item 13 is adopted. Item 14 was moved to the head of the counter. Resolution. Uh, next up, item number 15. Mr. Carr, you're recognized on item 15. I'll get you turned on here in just a second. You're recognized, Joe. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a resolution to get the ball rolling on a moratorium of zoning on the South Fork of the Holston River. Uh, yes, we're doing waiver of rules. Uh, just to clarify, we are not imposing a moratorium tonight. We're sending it over to the Planning Commission. They will get back to us with their recommendation and then we'll vote on it again. Uh, I'm requesting waiver of rules and also uh, please be sure to add uh, Commissioner Crosswhite as a co-sponsor. Uh, and I want to thank uh, Dan and uh, Amber for working with me very closely this week on it. Uh, they're probably sick of hearing from me. Uh, if you guys have any questions about it, they're here to, and they'd be happy to answer that. So thank you, guys. For the explanation, Commissioner Carr renews his motion for the meeting of introduction and adoption of item 15, uh, seconded by co-sponsors Van Over, Irish, and Crosswhite. Any questions? Seeing none, you appear to be ready to vote when the board opens, so they'll cast your vote on item 15. Is everyone voting? Anyone wish to change your vote? Madam Clerk, take the vote. 20 yes, 4 absent. And received the necessary majority, item number 15 is adopted. Moving on with the agenda, uh, these are added agenda items to item 16. Commissioner Lock, I, the copy I have has draft on it, but do, does the commission has, have a copy that is not identified the draft? Okay. Commissioner Lock, you're recognized. Did everybody get a copy of this? Yeah. 
Well, everybody's got a copy. I think I got my copy earlier when you drafted that time. How do you recognize for explanation? This resolution here is for Teen Sport Life Saving Crew to increase $7,000 to the remainder of fiscal year to meet answers regulations. It's really what this is for is back in 2000. 14 or 15, the county city, the commission back then did a county city agreement at the Kingsport Life Saving Crew when the lower end volunteer fire departments went in and done a first responder program. And the city does $75,000 and the county contributes $75,000 to have that paid guy on that rescue truck coming out of that station. The first responder programs at Sullivan West, Words Path, and Bloomingdale, we pay that first responder program to each department, I think it's $186,000 a year. So all this is, is to, we're going to do seven grand, the city's going to do seven grand, and that's going to get us $14,000 for the remaining fiscal year. And the reason we need to do this is they've had a lot of turnover and promotion at Kingsport Fire. And Kingsport Fire are the ones who run that rescue truck as a paid person. We can't run the truck as paid being a volunteer at that particular department. So our insurance does not cover anyone under the age of 21, and the firemen that are not engineers have worked there less than five years and they're not of age. So we want to put an engineer or hire in rank on that particular crash truck. And this is what it takes to get us there. And it also takes this to be in compliance with our insurance company. And the city has agreed to do seven grand if we will. So we went in day one on this together and it only works if both municipalities, county, city, agree upon terms. And, and that's why we have this resolution in front of us. Mr. Locke moves for the immediate introduction and adoption of line 16, seconded by Commissioner Gardner uh, for discussion. Commissioner Gardner, you're, you're ready now. Hunter, not even it's been a year, we did a five-year plan on all this for the rescues and fire and so forth. It's not even been a year yet. And we're already turning around and doing $7,000. How many more unexpected costs are we gonna have with something similar to this? I'll sit right back here and answer your question, which you just asked me again. The five-year plan has nothing to do with first responder paid services. The five-year plan was allotments and allocations of monies to each individual department in this county. We don't get this money. This money goes to the city of Kingsport for this paid person. I'm not asking for an increase on behalf of the Kingsport Life Saving Crew. I'm asking 7,000 to be gave to the city of Kingsport, but it flows through the Life Saving Crew. Well, how is it our fault that the city can't provide the services that they're supposed to provide? It's not their fault. We went in this together, county, city, municipality. It takes all of us to work together to have this. We already do this 150 grand, and Warriors Path, Sullivan West, and Bloomingdale do it from 186. So we've been saving the county 25 grand since day one. And we're still under the threshold. So you're saying $7,000, and then you mentioned there's another 15,000 coming. Next up. year, next fiscal year budget, correct. It'll be 15 grand from us and 15 grand from the city. If I wanted to come up here and mislead everybody and not be straight up, I'd ask for 186 tonight and move 186 on next fiscal year's budget to, to be even across the board. But I didn't, and we're not. What did you do before? You're, you're saying this employee, this employee's working for Kingsport now? That's and correct. That's, and Kingsport, he's drawing a salary from Kingsport. That's exactly what correct. is this seven thousand dollars going to cover for him? What, what expenses? Before there were firefighters, not ranked as an engineer, that were above 21 years of age or older. Now they've had promotions because of a lot of retirement, 
And now those people that were on those trucks, this truck has promoted. The ones that have been new hires have all been under the age of 21. They cannot drive these rescue trucks. Moving forward, we want somebody more qualified that has an engineer rank or higher to work this trash truck. For one, better knowledge, and it's compliance within Kingsport Life Saving Crew and their insurance agency, which is VFIS. These other first responder agencies, they're different. Worst Path, Bloomingdale, and I'm not going to speak on behalf of them, but I, I don't know that they have to be 21 of age or, or over. I know when I started, they turned me loose when I was 18 years old, 19 years old, when I had a state license. But things have changed now. So, so all the other departments in our area have to be 21 or older to drive a rescue truck? Like I said, I don't think, I'm not, when I was turned loose, I was 19. And I could, I could run calls as long as I had a state license. I don't know now. Jerry Cleaner's still here. He might be able to answer that. Uh, but I haven't been associated with the volunteer fire department in, in, as a member in a while. So there's seven thousand dollars will be flowing through the Kingsport Life Saving Crew to the city of Kingsport. To the city of Kingsport. Yes, sir. And then the city's already voted on their seven grand, so it's a total of fourteen thousand dollars. And then in the new budget, you're going to be coming back and asking for fifteen more. It'll be fifteen grand total from us and fifteen grand from the city to total thirty thousand dollars. And still yet, if we do that, we're still under what we've been doing with West Warriors and, and Bloomingdale. Thank you. Uh, any further questions for sponsor? Seeing none, reduce this motion for amendment and introduction and adoption of item 16. Second by Commissioner Gardner. Darlene, you're reckon, you're recognized. You turn yourself out. Heiner, I'd like to be a co-sponsor on this resolution. Yeah. Not, not objection. Uh, as Commissioner Calton to the as co-sponsor. Any further questions? Seeing none, we're ready to vote on board over cast your vote on item number 16. Requires 16 votes for passage. Everyone voted. Anyone wish to change your vote? Madam Clerk, take vote. 20 yes, 4 absent. I received the necessary majority. I'm 16 is adopted. Um, okay, I thought it was. Without paper, I believe that's all the resolutions we have. Now, there may be others. Let me, uh, Madam Clerk. Mr. Pro Tem, bring me up. Uh, I, I, I need to recognize Mr. Bailey on local government notes. Okay, I, I didn't have this resolution. Thank you for bringing this up here. Okay. We're going to have to take a second to get this in the system. Uh, I think this is probably the most paper I've seen in 12 years. So. Uh, we, have, we, have, we do have item number 17. I believe that, do the members have item 17 on your desk? Okay. And one job. Make sure the chairman got, got everything he needs. <laughs> Mr. Bailey, while she's doing that, I'll, I'll just recognize you and you can explain the Mr. Cross, uh, Cross first. Mr. Cross, you were... Yes, I was going to carry this resolution for Commissioner Cole, and I was hoping you would recognize Mr. Bailey on what's going on here. That's what I was going to ask. Okay. Uh, and Larry, while she's getting that in there, if you want to... This resolution is simply a finale to what you've seen before you. 
the last three months leading up to the capital outlay notes to be issued for the sheriff's vehicles. And it's kind of different than it used to be. It used to be the spotted would approve it first, and the Comptroller's Office would approve it after that. Now it's required that they approve it before you approve it. And uh, that's the way it's been run. Why it's been run for you three times. And so now I got final approval from them uh, somewhere about one o'clock. I was told yesterday afternoon it was approved. I didn't actually get it, or the mayor didn't get it until somewhere around lunch today. Is the reason we had to kind of scrap around this to how we phrase this. But it's actually it should have had it in the caption, and I we were kind of the wonderment how we would best do this because a year from now we start looking for when this was actually approved, this will be the date that it's approved, not those two previous meetings that we approved a portion of. So $1,550,000 should have been in the caption for that. So when we come back in a year from now, two years from now, trying to find it, it'll show up. If you don't mind if you amend that into it, it would be useful toward locating it in the future. Any questions? Heard the explanation. Any questions, uh, Commissioner Cross? Uh, you move for immediate introduction and adoption, seconded, seconded by Mr. Gardner. Uh, any any further questions for Mr. Bailey or Mr. Cross? Appreciate your responsiveness in the absence of Mr. Cole. Yes, sir. Thank you. Seeing none, on the board up to cast your vote on item number 17. Everyone voted. Anyone wish to change your vote? <coughs> Madam Clerk, take the vote. 20 yes, 4 absent. I received necessary majority item 17 is adopted. If there's any additional resolutions, we're going to ask Commissioner Gardner to come up here because I'm totally confused. <laughs> Don't you bring me another resolution? I believe that does complete our resolution agenda. Mr. Bailey, Mr. Bailey alluded to the fact that we just, I got an email at 1146 today and that's why we have a, a late filing on this. Uh, there was also a comment made that we borrowed $80 million with less paperwork than we did on financing these cars on the capital outlay note. And that's what we're dealing with. Uh, as they change the laws and change the regulations and rules in Nashville. So, Larry, I guess we've been on this for two or three months. Uh, uh, well, it started uh, probably in September with the Sheriff's Office. It, it, took, it took a while to put together the actual uh, vehicles and the outfitting of the vehicles, getting all that price together. And then uh, we had to confirm that we could borrow money with a capital outlay, but cheaper than we could... Uh, do with the uh, leasing agreement, which I was comfortable we could before we started, but that law has changed, so we have to show that with them, and I did, and uh, come forward, then getting everything else, but it's, uh, next time shouldn't be as challenging, but it, it did take a lot of <coughs> wasted effort on my part. Probably I didn't read some things as carefully. I didn't, the standards from an accounting standpoint have changed considerably with leases. And that's where I was putting focus on proving that first point. But actually, they've changed some other things. We've not issued any capital outlay notes in several years. That's how that's done. And uh, it's, in the long run, it'll not be this challenging, we hope. I hope not. I hope not. never see another one that is. But it's for a good cause. And uh, it's, uh, we could have been more, I could have been more expedient on the latter part. But uh, it was a slow process, and I regret that, but still. You're going to get, they're going to get their vehicles and uh, hopefully not too long off. Thank you, there. Uh, we have some members that want to be recognized. That completes our business agenda, and I know we've had some pass outs on the desk, and I, I'm sure people will want to tell you what they are. So, Commissioner Means, you're recognized. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just uh, wanted to invite the public and commissioners, mayor, county workers. All of our Sullivan County residents, our elected officials, pastors, leaders of churches, leaders of small businesses and clubs within our community, I would like for you to please consider it your personal invitation to come to our uh, Mapping Marxism event. And um, it's going to be here in this room 
And um, I'd love to have so many people that we have to move the desks and just have a really great time. And um, it'll be January 28th, so next Saturday from 5 to 6.30. And I just want to especially thank the mayor because he has been, he was just really uh, encouraging and supportive of uh, getting this type of information out to the public. And so this presentation will be given by a gentleman named Aaron Miller who is a veteran, um, a liberty advocate, and ex he also, um, with some other veterans they have in it, he's the executive director for the Foundation for Liberty and Freedom. Although I do believe it is important that we educate the next generation on this, um, please be aware of the dark subjects that will be discussed that may not be suitable for young children, um, cannibalism, mass torture, sexualization of children, and if you don't know who Karl Marx is or was, um, or why Marxism is important for us to understand, oh, this is, this is exactly why we're having this. So it's a free event, and also on a completely separate note, we're doing a book club. So that's going to be the first one of those is going to be February 11th. So if you're reading that book right now or listening to it, it'll be here at 9 a.m. And we'll just have uh, Socratic discussions over those, um, 1984. George Orwell, and I thank you all for entertaining this with me. <laughs> thank you. Uh, uh, let me, uh, uh, and thank you for recognizing me, Commissioner. Uh, of course, this is being held on Saturday night. Commissioner called me and asked me to, if it was possible to use the courtroom, and the courthouse is normally not open on Saturday night, but we try to respond to your needs. If you come to me and ask me to, to use the courthouse, and, I would say, and, and, and this is just a, a little disclaimer, that this is not endorsed by the commission. It is, uh, it is endorsed by the sponsor of the meeting, and like I say, you can have any meetings you like. A book club, I hope you have a good turnout on 84. I read that a long time ago, but uh, again, I, as a commissioner, you can uh, um, request, request the mayor's office, and it's not being, if this room's not being used, it's your room. And so, uh, and that doesn't mean that uh, if you have a subject that somebody doesn't agree with, it's your room. So, anyway, Sam? Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for the Wesley's culture. Oh, yeah, uh, you're welcome. It's kind of interesting because he's. Well, well, when you're working with an artist, you're on his time frame, and that's yeah. why. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you very much. Uh, for those of you that do the shopping in your household and you know what the cost of uh, eggs are now, uh, if you look on the uh, 4-H extension uh, flyer that's laying on your desk, if you have children or grandchildren that are in 4-H, you might want to encourage them if they're not in 4-H to join because I, I did this program one years ago when I was in 4-H to get the uh, baby chicks come out in March and there's a process but uh, if your neighborhood allows chickens it's a good time to get some free chickens. <laughs> Thanks Sam. Mr. Raker. Thank you Chairman. Just a couple quick things. Uh, welcome back Larry Crawford. Good to see you sir. Fabulous to see you. Right it is always isn't it? Um, that was good but you know our section over here has talked a lot about money spending, and, and Larry, you mentioned about the capital outlay, the million five, and how that was different for the leases compared to and all that. Does that mean that the state, we're going to get rid of copier leases in the future? Commissioner <laughs> 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 Glover, stop that. Matthew Johnson, would you come up here and make place? We're going to recess this. Recognize our director of the archives. Yes, sir. Matthew, I want to I want to give you a little pat on the back here and tell you how much that I appreciate what you've done since you've been on the job. And, and the Thanks. things that you've done and the attention that you've brought to this county with the tourism, uh, this information here that's laid on our desk tonight about, uh, about the old Dairy Inn and the museum and stuff like that, you have done 
a hell of a job. And thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Now, Herschel is going to come out for more. Ball riding again. Saturday night. Very good. Yes, Gordon. What about the blow ride? Oh, you got to go. Family friendly. It's the most American event that you can attend right now. There you go. I'll tell you later. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Cold water. I got a bucket of water up here. <laughs> We have a motion to adjourn. That top top motion. All those favor say aye. Those folks know we're adjourned. I mean.